Ink Ribbon. On my channel, you'll see that game, Silent Hill. I promised I'd take you there again someday, and now I'm doing it again. This time to the fourth entry, which is actually my favorite Silent Hill game. I know a lot of people didn't care for it, and it definitely had some flaws, but isn't that what we loved about survival horror games? Before I get to the video, I have to give a huge shout out to the YouTuber Rodolfo Nunez for a lot of the video you're about to see. If you're a fan of Silent Hill and Resident Evil, be sure to check out his channel. He posts a ton of behind the scenes Silent Hill stuff and does a lot of crazy things like hacking the game and messing with stuff. Not just this game, but all the Silent Hill series. So with that, here's my list of the top 10 secrets and easter eggs in Silent Hill 4. Number 10. False Rumor So first off, I want to clear up a rumor that even I believed back in the day. There's a popular tale that Silent Hill 4 was originally a standalone game and then was reworked into a Silent Hill game. This is not true. From the beginning, this was always meant to be a Silent Hill game. In fact, it's quite the opposite. This was pre-planned so far back that it's connected to Silent Hill 2. Specifically, the, there was a hole here but it's gone now, written on the bar wall. Now I know it's a bit far-fetched to say that they planned the game that far back, but I can guarantee that it sprouted the idea, especially with how mysterious the message on the wall was. So yeah, next time you hear someone tell the rumor, make sure to let them know that it is indeed a rumor. Number 9 Unused Content Within the files of Silent Hill 4 are a number of unused assets. Two items called a Dirty Stone and a Channeling Stone are in the game, but unobtainable. Originally, the most likely scenario would be that you would get the Dirty Stone from the toilet and wash it in the sink in Henry's apartment to make the Channeling Stone, which would be used for the UFO ending. And if you wanted to know more about the unused UFO ending, unfortunately there's no information about it at all except for the unused text UFO that would be on your save file for completing it. But I did find this very well made fan ending that someone did. I tried to find the original creator but I couldn't anywhere so if you know who made it please comment below and I'll pin it. Originally Henry wore a brown tucked in shirt but this was changed since he blended into the background too much. The original version of Henry was removed, but is still accessible in the game's files, and through model swapping, you're actually able to replace Henry's model with the original. And of course, there are a few unused monsters, though they look more like unfinished models. These models are connected to a stage file that indicates they were supposed to be used in the room with the large circular staircase. All of these have very strong suggestions of infanticide and birth, which, while it goes with the game's themes, it was probably too mature for a game at that time. First is a figure, possibly a male, holding what looks like a baby wrapped in cloth. Then there's the body of a woman with a baby sticking out of her belly. And lastly is a nurse cutting open a woman at the abdomen, most likely imitating a c-section. The textures on these models seem to have stopped abruptly, which most likely means they were removed very swiftly. And speaking of the staircase, there were also a few variations of the staircase found in the files, some of which even include Valtiel from Silent Hill 3. And lastly, there are a whole slew of unused animations for Eileen when you are spying on her through the peephole. Again, you can see these on the channel I mentioned before, and the link is in the description. <laughs> Number 8 Hidden Details Throughout the game are small details that can be really easy to overlook, but are amazing fan service. If you look closely at Jasper's shirt, you can see that the monster is actually the final box from Silent Hill 1. Oh man, that was awesome! In the staircase mentioned earlier, there are Cecropia moths hidden out of view and without the hacking of a camera, it's really hard to see them. This is a reference to Alessa, if you remember her room and the wall of moths that she collected. A lot of fans think the photo in the living room is the hotel from Silent Hill 2, but it's actually Punta della Dogana in Venice, and it was gifted to Henry by the superintendent, but more on him later. And lastly is a hidden weapon in the game. In the prison, under one of the beds is a stun gun. The game doesn't really give any indication that it's there, so it's very easy to miss it, but it's also a pretty useless weapon, so don't worry too much about it. Number 7 
Unlockable Extras Unless you have played Silent Hill 4 a lot, you probably aren't aware of all the unlockable extras the game has to offer. First are the two unlockable costumes, one for Cynthia and one for Eileen, both of which would fit perfectly in Dead or Alive Extreme, but they do require some effort to get. Eileen's nurse costume is unlocked by completing the game once with an ending where Eileen lives, then in your next playthrough you find a nurse costume in her apartment. You must keep it in your inventory for the entire game and get another ending where Eileen lives, and then on your third playthrough she will be wearing it for most of the game. For Cynthia's costume, you simply need to get all four endings. It's worth noting that she has a small tattoo of Robbie the Rabbit on her butt. Next in the unlockables are the extra modes. These include one weapon mode and all weapons mode. To unlock one weapon mode, you need to beat the game on hard mode with a 10 star rank. In this mode, every weapon in the game will be laid out in the subway. Once you select a weapon, all other weapons disappear and it becomes your weapon for the rest of the game. Even Eileen's weapons don't appear. If you complete this mode with a 10 star rank, you unlock all weapons mode, which is the same setup except this time you can pick up any of the weapons as many times as you want, and at any time in Henry's apartment there will always be pistol ammo in the laundry room and health drinks in the fridge. The last unlockables are two weapons, a chainsaw for Henry and a submachine gun for Eileen. In a new Fear game, you can get the chainsaw near Jasper's car, and for Eileen's submachine gun you need to get a 9 star rank. Just be warned that while the gun makes Eileen a killing machine, it also hurts her and causes her to be possessed sometimes. Number 6 Monster Origins You know those really, really scary twins? This monster has the face of two babies stuck together, and this creature is actually Victim 7 and 8 molded into one, which are Billy and Miriam Locane, noted as murdered in Silent Hill 2. Instead of taking the form of individual ghosts, they take the form of one monster. Since they were killed together and are brother and sister, the creature tends to point at its own victim before attacking it. Speaking of victims, throughout the game you encounter ghosts, but did you know that they all have backstories? Each one of the ghosts are one of Walter's victims and correspond to a number carved onto them. Victims 1, 2, 3, 6, and 9 are the same model and serve as a generic dead man. Victim 4 is Steve Garland, the owner of the pet shop that gets shot up. He died along with all his animals, which might be the reason he's one of the few ghosts to wield a weapon. Victim 10 is Eric Walsh, who was a bartender at the Bar Southfield, which is on the billboard with the phone number. Victim 12 is Peter Walls, who was the first death in the second round of killings. Victim 13 is Sharon Blake, a housewife. Victim 14 is Toby Archbolt, who was a priest and is one of the most common ghosts in the game, constantly reappearing. Victim 16 is Cynthia Velasquez, who needs no explanation. Victim 17 is Jasper Gein, who you meet near the orphanage and shares a last name with Ed Gein, at least in concept. Victim 18 is Andrew DeSalvo, also known as the fat man you get the shirt from in the prison. If you listen closely, you can hear him singing while he floats around. Victim 19 is Richard Braintree, who you meet a few times in the game, and he is a unique ghost, being able to walk around and also teleport all around you. Number 5 Movie References just like the first three games, Silent Hill 4 takes inspiration from film, but this time from three of them. First, it's worth mentioning that the giant spinny orb thing at the end of the game is very similar to the gravity device in the 1997 movie Event Horizon. Maybe it's just me. Then there's the fact that Jasper looks almost identical to the character Daniel Spud Murphy from the 1996 movie Train Spotting. Again, maybe it's just me, but given the track record of character designs, that's where my money is. And last, but definitely most prominent, is the similarities to the 1954 movie Rear Window. In the movie, a man is trapped in his apartment and begins spying on his neighbors. That's where the story similarities end, but the actual view of his neighbors is virtually identical to the movie and is definitely, at the very least, an homage to it. Number 4 Superintendent did you know that Silent Hill 4 has some really strong ties to Silent Hill 2? So as I mentioned before, the photo in Henry's living room was a gift from the superintendent. In case you didn't catch his name, the superintendent's full name is Frank Sunderland, 
And you guessed it, he's James's father. Also, you find the mailbox overflowing with love letters to Rachel, who was the main nurse who cared for Laura and Mary. There's also some creepy implications about her. Mike, a painter, was her boyfriend, and apparently Frank mistook one of his tenants as her boyfriend, and later you can find a cassette labeled Skinned Mike, where you can hear the voice of Richard Braintree, as well as a woman's voice, who is most likely Rachel herself. In the 21 Sacraments ending, it says that Frank is found dead in an apartment with five police officers, but he is alive and well in all the other endings. Five unnamed police officers have been found dead, for reasons unknown, in the South Ashfield Heights apartment, along with its superintendent, Mr. Frank Sunderland. Number 3 Eileen Galvin You know that famous hospital room where Eileen's giant head is just hanging out? This is actually a very clever scare for the audience and sends a message to the player. Throughout the game, Henry spies on Eileen in her apartment through a peephole in the wall. Now you can use any excuse you want, but voyeurism is voyeurism. Well this room gives that exact feeling right back to you. Eileen is watching Henry as he moves around the room, and her breathing is somewhere between scared and sexual. <sighs> It's just something I wanted to mention since it's often overlooked. Also, you can come into this room with Eileen and the head will still be there, but she won't comment on it, so it's likely that only Henry can see it. There is an extremely rare chance that Eileen will sneeze. I recorded forever to see if she would, but she never did. Eileen is the first character in the series who can actually help you in combat, and she's actually pretty amazing at it. Even when just equipped with a purse, she shows no mercy. One odd thing about her is that she seems to heal miraculously fast towards the end of the game. I mean, she was literally beaten to near death, has her arm in a cast, and then in the good endings, she is totally fine. This also contradicts the 21 Sacraments ending, which states that she died of her injuries. And the last bit of Eileen trivia is that her room actually contains two references to Silent Hill 3, or I guess you could call them recycled assets. The first is a painting of squares, which can be seen in the gallery in Silent Hill 3. The second is an orange skirt, which is seen hanging in the boutique at the mall. Number 2 Walter Sullivan Walter is, well, kind of insane. But not normal levels of insane, Silent Hill levels of insane. His appearance, motives, backstory, and actions are all physically impossible. I mean, a serial killer who is on his own list of victims, kills himself, and then continues down his list? <sighs> Only in Silent Hill. But Walter was actually first mentioned in Silent Hill 2 and mentioned multiple times. First is in the newspaper article Outside the Woodside Apartments where it details that Walter killed the twins, as I mentioned before, and also describes how he killed himself with a rusty spoon. It also mentions him talking about seeing the Red Devil, which most people assume is Pyramid Head but is actually Jimmy Stone, the ghost that tries to crawl into your apartment through the wall. In Silent Hill 2, he is also mentioned as an answer during the elevator quiz show and his name is on one of the tombstones in the labyrinth. When you see him disemboweling the stone-looking corpse in the hospital, this is actually the character model of Claudia Wolf from Silent Hill 3. Now it's definitely not Claudia, but most likely just a reused model for this game. And I hope you're ready for this, Walter's face is modeled after the actor, Brendan Fraser. Number 1 Henry Townsend Henry is very stoic and seems normal, but he's actually kind of an oddball. For example, if you examine his shoes, he can't remember where or when he bought them and wonders if they're even his. He's also the first main character in a Silent Hill game with no official age. The European site for the game said he was in his late 20s, but there's never been an official number given. What the hell? Henry has an interest in photography, which is why his apartment is filled with framed photos. Like every victim in the game, Henry was supposed to give an item to Walter's other world to serve as a memory of himself. While Henry's item is never shown or mentioned, it's widely believed that room 302 itself is what he gave. 
Whenever Henry leaves the apartment, especially for the first time, it's a very symbolic transition, mainly symbolizing birth, which is a big theme of the game. This is also why sometimes in new areas Henry will wake up in a fetal position. And to end this list on a high note, there are a few hidden animations for Henry. One is if you equip him with a golf club or a bat and wait, he will do some practice swings. If you give him a shovel and wait, he will lean on it. And just like James, when equipped with the chainsaw, he will proudly wave it around. And that is it for this list. If there's anything that I may have missed, let me know down in the comments or find me on Twitter at Games. I love making these videos for you guys and I really appreciate you coming to my channel. If you haven't subscribed yet, you totally should because there are a lot more of these videos to come. I'm Kai Morgan, and as always, thanks for watching Ink Ribbon. And a very special thank you to my bronze, silver, and gold Patreon supporters. Thanks to you, I can make videos without worrying about demonetization and grow my channel faster.